Okay, I'm recording now. All right, great. So I ask this um, uh, very relevant question on um, my views on the fear of God and punishment by God. So it's um, generally speaking, I mean, we a lot of advanced spiritual uh, seekers have probably had many, many lifetimes uh, in this, you know, in this uh, incarnating in this world in different time periods. And um, so all of those time periods, you know, you'll have gone to spiritual groups, churches, various uh, places, and there'll be uh, various, various teachings and various ideas and also the collective energy of the groups, the collective energy of the world at the time. Uh, and there will be, of course, you know, being a human, having an ego, there is always the projection and the fear of being punished. You know, if you're bad or you're not good, you know, the law will punish you, uh, your church will punish you, um, or you contextualize things, you know, like someone says, like, it's not good to put your hand in the fire. Uh, and you think, well, of course, that's because if I put my hand in the fire, I'll be punished by God, you know, or something bad will happen. So everything uh, at a low level of consciousness, um, the ego mechanisms are more inflated. So if you're vibrating at the level of fear or even temporarily uh, vibrating at the level of fear, then uh, you will start to resonate and see the world through the prism of fear and, and even connect to the collective thoughts of fear. So it's m very much like I've been bad. I haven't. Uh, I haven't been honest about you know everything that happened with the property or whatever. Um, so you know the uh, council will find me out. The law will find me out. They'll put me in jail. They'll find me. Uh, God will punish me as well for being a bad spiritual boy. So all of these um, fears. Uh, once you are in uh, lower levels of consciousness, the fear of being uh, punished by people, yourself, God. Uh, as it's projected out there, that fear of something outside of me punishing me, that dualistic fear and that visceral fear gets stronger and stronger. Uh, as you start to do spiritual work and transcend and do work on your fears, you, you rise in consciousness and your inner experience uh, as you go from, say, fear, the vibration of fear to, say, uh, neutrality, then you, you, be, you start to feel neutral about things. You think, probably God's quite laid back and quite neutral, isn't really punishing or loving, and actually life's quite neutral. I feel neutral towards myself and others, but other people are probably quite neutral towards me. So you start to get this um, experience of life of God and of yourself and others. As you move into the states of love, as you get overtaken by the fields of love, and you experience that love from within and you see with the eyes of love, shall we say, with holy vision uh, or oneness vision, then it's like, well, actually God is love and there is only love and I see love everywhere I look. So, uh, and in those vibrations, you don't get the thought. It doesn't, you can't even enter into the mind that God is going to punish me and that, uh, and that uh, there, there is punishment. You start to see uh, the nature of separation and and the nature of the ego and the nature of uh, what it was uh, that when one was, was in fear and when others are in fear and it tends often to be put, if, uh, contextualized through the eyes of compassion or forgiveness. So in terms of, I mean, more from a dualistic point of view, because in truth there is no separation or duality, so there's not a me in separation to God. When you get to those infinite states where you, you stop identifying with the body, with your personal thoughts, and you go into the fields of infinite love, of course, the idea that God is in separation to you or there's an ego uh, of your limited self, your body and your thinking that needs to be afraid of God or the universe, of course, that can't exist. But at lower levels of consciousness, uh, I mean, I think it's very, very useful uh, to... Um, I think the downside of many of the Western religions is they do not talk about past lives and karma from a dualistic point of view. Of course, uh, I like what Buddha said, you know, um, 
as long as you're um, in separation, as long as you're a body, mind, thinking entity in separation, you think you're an individual, you will be beset by uh, suffer suffering your attachments, old age, uh, illnesses, death, all of those things. So as long as you're in separation, until you're enlightened, you will always suffer. You'll be suffering your attachments and being uh, in separation in the world. Of course, if you've done a lot of spiritual work, it would be a lot less uh, than if you haven't done any spiritual work, then the suffering of your attachments or addictions or suicidal thoughts will be more likely. So, um, and it will seem that, you know, the law will punish you if you steal donuts or you'll get health problems. You think God's punishing you by eating too much sugar or whatever it is. Um, so everything starts to seem very punishing because you can't get what you want and the world seems to be taking away everything that you've got. But I think um, in the, I think on a practical point of view, unless, because not everyone is enlightened, not everyone is Buddha, is, uh, uh, is the understanding of karma and the understanding, uh, and it's not really talked about so much in the West, um, but past lives and um, that, um, and I think Hawkins in his great love as a spiritual teacher shared his own experiences of having flashbacks to past lives. Um, and, there see, and that there is, um, you know, if you hold guilt and uh, within yourself, and uh, also as you, because you're, you know, like you may be at low levels of consciousness, so you can easily do things from a more low, low level of consciousness, from a place of selfishness, from a place of cowardness, from a place of lack of conscience. So, you know, he was having a hernia operation and suddenly had a flashback as he had this excruciating pain as they were doing surgery on him. And he had a flashback to a past lifetime when uh, as a soldier, he had skewered someone in the groin, maybe with a spear or a sword, but didn't do the soldier's practice of finishing them off. So he didn't finish them off and left them to die a slow death which is not the soldier's code really at the time. You should finish them off, not leave them in agony. But the guilt, the guilt he held, you know, if you hold guilt in your consciousness, um, and that will happen if some aspect of you knows what you're doing is selfish and wrong, if you're creating suffering to others, you hold that guilt and it will, uh, it will, um, it will stay as you incarnate lifetime after lifetime and will pull back consequences of your, of your prior actions. So not having resolved that guilt through spiritual mechanisms and holding that guilt that he didn't uh, finish that soldier off and left him to suffer because he was too, for whatever reason, uh, didn't finish him off. So in this lifetime, he was able to pay that guilt off. Um, wasn't uh, a punishing God just sort of arbitrarily choosing, oh, I'm just going to punish you for no reason because I don't like you. Um, it was his own choice, his lack of consciousness, if you like, or his ignorance, you know, like Christ said, forgive them for not, they know not what they do. You're just ignorant at the time and weren't able to finish him off. But there is, um, but that, uh, that action and holding that guilt means that in a future lifetime, you get to pay that off. You could pay that off through experiencing what you did onto others. So I think that reminds me of the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Forgive everyone, everything. Uh, you know, uh, forgive, forgive us our sins uh, so that we may be forgiven, yes. So, you know, may, maybe um, when, I, when I have uh, things, it's probably because I've inflicted things on others lifetime after lifetime. I think Hawkins' great thing was to have compassion for yourself if it seems you're experiencing a lot of bad fortune in life. Because in past lifetimes, you know, uh, it was savage. You know, in, 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 this is quite civilized age we're in in these years. But, you know, take it back a few hundred years, you know, it's quite barbaric. So everyone was barbaric to each other. Every, you know, your, your friend would club you on the head, you'd club them on the head. Uh, so it was all quite barbaric. And, uh, and then if you have that karma and you're in this lifetime and a lot of barbaric things start happening to you, it's uh, not because of a uh, punishing, uh, isn't, it's really because of my own seeds that are planted in this lifetime. Now there's not really uh, a punishing God, even though there are such mechanisms as, as divine forgiveness 
uh, and grace that we can tap into to alleviate or remove karma. So you don't have to do the, what I call, I call it, I mean, in my language, I call it karmic undoing. If you don't do enough spiritual work uh, before your karma is due, then you have to pay it off the hard way. I think in 12 steps, we have step nine amends, we have uh, service. So hopefully we can pay off a lot of our karmic debts before they sort of hit us on the face. So we don't have to be hit on the face by them by not doing spiritual work. But if you don't manage to clear it, you might get, uh, you might get to undo what you've done to others. So it's not, um, it's very, very easy. Uh, you know, I've done it in the past uh, to project that I'm unfairly being um, victimized or punished uh, by God. But um, uh, probably if I did some um, past life regression or I could have some flashbacks, when you become, uh, when you get to very advanced levels of consciousness, you can normally start to experience your past lives. Why does that happen? Well, when you've got a big ego, you're so identified with this current life and everything going on in your ego that you're not elevated enough to remember your past lifetimes. But once you've gotten to very high states and there's not hardly any ego left, getting flashbacks of other past lifetimes easy. As a, as a hypnotherapist, you know, you, you, you do past life regression by regressing people. Uh, so they disengage from their ego and can remember their past lives. But once you get advanced, you just get automatic flashbacks. Okay, so yeah, that's my answer for today on, on that great question.